Most interviews with members of the royal family take place in nice, cosy studios. But when it comes to Wax's interview with His Royal Highness Prince Edward, it happens halfway up a hill. Why? Well, we're on a hill called the Lawley in deepest Shropshire to find out more about a scheme called the Duke of Edinburgh's Award. Prince Edward is in charge of the preparations to celebrate its 30th anniversary. And while we were up there, we hoped to meet some young people from Birmingham who are training for the expedition, which makes up part of their Duke of Edinburgh's Award scheme activities. Why don't you take a nice rest on this? Yep. <coughs> get my rock back. And see what we've achieved so far. Oh. Not very much, really. It's a great view, though, isn't it? Tell me, James, why have you brought me all the way out into the middle of Shropshire on this freezing cold morning and dragged me halfway up this hill? It's just for the view. It's a wonderful view. Oh. Right. Now, this is obviously one part of the training for the Duke of Edinburgh's award, but what's the main aim of the scheme? It's a challenge, and uh, it challenges not just. Um, the physical, but also the mental, and, and uh, test skills. And I, th I think the, the essential one is, is a challenge. Now, there's a gold, silver, and bronze award which you can get. Tell me a bit about those different kinds of awards. Well, they're basically three levels. Um, the bronze, of course, being the, the, the lowest, and, and the young people are encouraged to start on the bronze. It's quite a gentle introduction to the scheme. Um, and then, if they wish to progress, they can go on to the silver and finally to the gold. You don't necessarily have to do it that way. You can go um, straight on to the silver or, or even go for the gold. The gold, of course, is um, that much more difficult. The expeditions are longer. Um, the skills are usually a bit more uh, taxing. And the physical activities or, or design for living are usually um, a bit more difficult. So it's just a, a gradual step up in, in, the, um, in the levels of, of, uh, of standards. Uh, did that take you long to put up? No. Yeah. I'm going to here, I think. Oh, it's not the best weather to be at. Not really, no. Chopping around the hill, is it? Mm. Like a cup of tea. Oh, what an excellent idea. Thank you. And sugar if you want to. Oh, really? Look at this. This is organisation catering with a smile. That's it. Mm. So, so what are, you, are you all on the uh, the gold? Or are you doing, some of you doing silver as well? Gold. Doing gold, gold at the moment. moment. Yeah. Where, where did you do your expedition? You did it in Trinidad. Trinidad? Yeah. That's a bit exotic. How did you manage to get there? Uh, well, it was triangular exchange with the West Indies and Canada. And uh, it was staged at first in England with Canadians and West Indies. Yeah. Then Canada did the, did the same. Right. We went to the West Indies. And we were right. there for four weeks and did our expedition there and some service. Yeah. And our res residential as well. Slightly different from here, isn't it? Yeah. It's probably a bit warmer out there, wasn't it? Yeah, just a bit, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> I found you. A snowman has just arrived. At last. The only reason I found you is because I could smell the coffee. My compass froze up. That's no excuse. Oh, well. That's, that's no excuse. Never mind. Well, well, have some of that. Oh, and, uh, warm might, tea. Might thaw you out a bit. Ah. Any problems? No, no, no problems at all. Good. Now, a bit earlier on, a bit further down the hill, we were talking about your own experiences of the Duke of Edinburgh's award. How important do you think it is for young people to take part in schemes like these? Well, I think it's I think it's much better. I think that um, they get a chance to uh, to meet different people. Um, <clears throat> if it's organised and, and there are people who know what they're doing, and, and it makes makes it much more um, it makes it much easier to fit into an organisation that's already set up to do it. And it also um, they'll get more out of it because they'll get proper instruction on to uh, tents and and camp craft and and things like that. Um, so there's that side of things. I think there's an advantage about having an organisation that's set up to do the job. You're the chairman of a committee set up to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Duke of Edinburgh's award. What are you hoping to gain by these celebrations? The basic purpose is to, to raise the money. But also what we're trying to do is, is to try and bring the scheme up to date in people's minds and, and make them a little bit more aware of, of what the scheme can offer to, to, to young people. The scheme's been set up 30 years now and it seems to be going very well, but what about the future? I think it's very exciting because it's a very, um, as I said, it, the, the aspects are very broad and it can, and the reason it survived so well in the 30 years is because it's constantly adapting to new situations. And now we're, we're beginning to um, tackle the problem of, of, of the inner cities, we're beginning to, to give people a chance to, to, um, to get out of a rut, say. And I think that's, that's very important, to give people um, um, a boost and, and, and give them morale, that, that there is somebody interested in them and that there is uh, aspects that they can get involved in. 
And in the future, I think that's going to become more and more important. And the more people that we can get involved in it, not only doing it, but also um, leading it and, and uh, organising the events, then the better it is. That's, right. That's the essential one. Well, I think before it gets any worse, I think we'd better trot down the hill. <coughs> up a bit. That seems like okay. a very good idea. Right. Let's go. Right. Oh. 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 Thanks very much. Oh. At last, I had a guide who knew where he was going. At least, I think he did.